So Frostborn comes out with their first season, and a lot of us Last Day on Earth refugees were like, no. But then it turns out to be an amazing season. Like, too amazing. Like, give us gold coins for a normal amount of grinding. Amazing. And no pay to win advantage. Amazing. But then right before the update is released, Kafir makes the worst decision possible. But on the bright side, it caused me to learn something about Last Day on Earth that is going to blow your mind. So those of us that have been playing Last Day on Earth for a while have gotten kind of used to Kafir and the way they do things, right? If you have watched my 311 tips and tricks video for Last Day on Earth, I talk about the exponential grinding pyramid of death. You can occasionally see this in some other games here and there, but it is uniquely common in Last Day on Earth. For example, in this last update, they made it to where the only weapons that can do significant damage to enemies in hard mode are Genesis weapons, which are the rarest and most valuable weapons in the game. In order to get these weapons, you must complete the normal lab over and over again. In order to have the materials to complete the lab, you need to complete Bunker Alpha, the farm, and other mid-tier challenges over and over again. And then lastly, to get the materials you need to complete those challenges, you need to do a lot of normal zones. So you can see the exponential grinding pyramid of death is a common theme in the Last Day on Earth, even in its most recent update. And this has always bothered me, but the times that it has bothered me the most is when the devs release a good update or are about to release a good update that we all like and it seems a little bit more like a normal game, and then Kafir changes it to fit the EGP. PD formula. They turn good updates into bad updates, often before they're released. And when I talk to the devs about it, it can be so confusing because sometimes they talk like true gamers and you can tell that they know what is truly good in games. But other times it feels like they're following some secret formula that says, don't give players too much, don't make them too happy, you need to make sure that they're using more resources than they're getting from playing the game. Which at some level makes sense because when we're talking about the single player side of Last Day on Earth, if you get too rich, then you are more likely to lose interest in the game. But often the changes that Kafir would make would be so stingy and make players so upset that they would just leave the game, which is obviously not a good formula. So I've come up with a lot of theories about what Kafir is doing, and some of them are still great theories. So if you're interested, make sure to check out my playlist on my conspiracy theories about Kafir. But in this most recent Frostborn update, I learned something about Kafir that I was never able to quite pick up on with Last Day on Earth, and I think it might be the missing link to a lot of those conspiracy theories. But before I can explain to you what it is, I need to give you a little bit more background on Frostborn. To those of you who don't know, Frostborn is Kafir's most advanced game with PvP and co-op challenges integrated throughout the game. It also has better graphics, more diverse skill trees, yada yada yada. If you want to know more, check out my comparison on the two games. But more importantly than the differences of the two games is the differences in how the games are being developed. Because Frostborn has PvP, which makes people lose a lot of gear when they fight each other, the devs have not needed to create a heavy grind to get the best gear in the game. In fact, a skilled player that knew what they were doing could start a new game and have all the best gear within six hours of playing. Furthermore, the devs seem to have more freedom to care about the player's opinion, continuously making changes in line with the community's desire. Now, this has proven difficult because some of the desires compete, like in this latest update by trying to fix teamers and solo zones, they made it harder for players not to trade items with each other. Some of you Sector 7 players are like, what? <laughs> They're trying to fix the teamer problems in Frostborn? Whereas in Last Day on Earth, it's way worse and some of you are like what you can trade items with people that are not on your team and you don't have to let them kill you the answer is yes like i said frostborn is more advanced in this area but it still has a long way to go compared to a triple a game however the point i am making here is that they're trying they continue to make updates that are focused around listening to the community but every once in a while that egpd kafir formula rears its head and ruins an update and when it does the first thing that the community says is this is just like last day on earth. And I agree, it does feel that way, but it also feels a little bit different. Well, in this last update, I think I figured it out. For those of you who don't know, Frostborn introduced their first season. Those of us that have played Last Day on Earth and saw Last Day on Earth go downhill when season started were immediately worried. But then when we studied the season from Frostborn's open beta test server, we realized that there was no advantage for paying players. And if you worked hard as a free to play player, Kafir was giving out gold coins for free. Some of you might not believe that statement because in the last 
four years of lasting Earth, Grim Soul Survival, Jurassic Survival, LDW Cube Survival, and Siberica, Kafir has never allowed players to earn gold coins. But I'm serious. Frostborn Season 1 allows free to play players to gain coins. We were getting so excited. Frostborn updates have done some great things, but this was unprecedented. But then, right before the update got released from the open beta to the global servers, the devs changed it to where it required twice as many points to get to the end of the season and almost three times as many points to get the gold coins at the end. The community was outraged. Now, some of you that play Last Day on Earth might say, who cares? Getting a third of the amount of gold coins is still more gold coins than Kafir has ever given out. And you make a good point. There is some truth to that if they started with that point system, a lot less players would be upset and there would be almost no player outrage. And we know that conveying a good public image is not one of Kafir's strong points, but I've already talked about that in other videos. The revelation I had from this update is in regards to how it was changed. The devs of Frostborn are very creative, deep thinkers, and true gamers. They know what is good and what is bad. They created a great update that players would love. In fact, it essentially made everything about the game free to play, assuaging almost all player complaints in a single blow. It would require a lot of grinding, but it was something that was attainable and the rewards were definitely worth it. But then it got changed at the last second and more importantly, it got changed in a way that was not in line with how the devs think. The truth is, I knew it was too good as it was and that it was going to be exploited. I knew it needed to be fixed. The devs had set it up to where one hour of playing a day would let you finish the season and get a good taste of the extra rewards. Two hours a day would let you finish the season considerably early and allow you to get a ton of rewards. That's perfect for normal players. But if someone grinds for 15 hours a day, then they would have gotten hundreds of dollars of rewards and break the economy of the game. So it makes sense that they needed to make a change, but the change they made was unimaginative and obtuse, lacking the understanding of gaming. By increasing the points, they didn't even really fix the problem they set out to fix, but rather just mitigated the damage. Meanwhile, this change shifted the requirement for normal players from one to two hours of playing a day, which is realistic, to two to six hours a day, which is ridiculous and not in touch with with gamers at all, especially mobile gamers. The EGPD formula had stretched out his hand and killed what was beautiful. But this time it was too obvious. This time it was too clear that the devs that made the update did not ruin the update it was someone else. Even though I'm a gamer and often represent you guys, I knew it needed to be fixed because you can't let players exploit the system getting thousands of free coins. But it took me less than 30 seconds to think of a way to actually fix it that wouldn't destroy it for normal players. All you need to do is add a daily cap of points. And then if you want extreme grinders to keep on grinding, you let them keep accruing points at a 10% rate after they hit the cap. If they're motivated enough, they'll keep on grinding even though it's only one tenth of points because they're motivated gamers and they want just a few more rewards. And they're getting rewarded for playing the game so they don't mind playing some more to get more rewards. But that way you don't in the process discourage normal players from even participating. In fact, personally, I would have given a buff that gave double points for one hour every day to help equal the playing field and help further motivate the more casual players to play for at least an hour. Now I'm not saying that this idea is perfect, but if I can come up with something this much better in just a few minutes of thinking about it, these amazing amazing devs could probably have come up with something much better. But they weren't the ones that made the change. It was someone else. And that someone else obviously has a lot of power. In fact, it seems obvious to me that he or she has the last say. The devs are working for them and creating some amazing stuff. And then at the last second, they can come in and say, no, change it to this. And that person is the one that is out of touch with gaming, thus taking good updates made by the devs and ruining them. This is typical of many organizations where the boss has a tendency to overstep their area of expertise and make executive decisions based on their opinions simply because they're in charge. And if this were the case, then it would make sense that it happens to Last Day on Earth much sooner than it happens to Frostborn. Last Day on Earth is Kafir's biggest source of money, and it is made by the original Kafir team. It would make sense that the boss man or woman is heavily involved in all decisions regarding this game. Whereas Frostborn is probably made by another studio, just like we saw with Grim Soul Survival and Jurassic Survival, I would guess that that studio is given some freedom to make some great updates and they've probably been allowed to release some of those great updates without being questioned because the game is technically making a lot more money per download 
than any of their other games. Which side note to Kefir, even though Frostborn has less grinding than any of your other games, it is making more money. Now a lot of this is because of the fun of multiplayer, but this really goes in line with what I've been telling you guys, that players will actually spend more money when they don't feel like they're being forced to spend money to succeed. So I'm not saying I told you so because I'm obviously not 100% sure, but maybe you should look into it. Anyways, perhaps it is because Frostborn has been making more money that this boss person has has allowed more freedom with their updates. But then when they try to do something like this update where they <laughs> try to give out free coins, the boss is like, nope. And because the boss says it, it goes, taking an amazing update and making it out of touch with the gaming world. So that is my newest theory on what is going on behind the scenes with Kefir. I like it because it both explains why Kefir keeps ruining good updates, but it also explains why there is such a difference between Frostborn and Last Day on Earth in the way they ruin those updates. So what do you guys think about this theory? Do you like it? Do you think I'm onto something? Or perhaps this theory sparks an idea in one of you that is an even better theory. Regardless, please put it in a comment below as I do read your comments and I love most of them. Alright guys, I'll see you next time.